Hey everyone, so we have Carmine Tallarico from Don't Bay Pharmaceuticals joining us and they've been doing a lot of really great research on the coronavirus. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the spike protein. Uh, we can see that right here, it's fully glycosylated so you can see all the glycans located in the light blue color. Um, we're going to see how it actually interacts with ACE2, colored here in yellow. Uh, we're going to be looking at both human and mink uh, variants of ACE2. And of course the ACE2 lives within, just on the outside of the cell membrane, which we have represented here. So this would pretty much be inside your cell, this is outside of your cell, and this is how the coronavirus gains entry. So yeah, thanks so much for, for joining us, Carmen and Daniel, and let's go ahead and explore these mutations caused by the minks over in Denmark. First of all, I want to thank you guys from Nanom and uh, I want to thank you Professor uh, Giovanni Chilemi from University of Tusha that uh, provide us this uh, very interesting and innovative uh, spike ACE2 complex in membrane in its uh, fully glycosylated uh, form. So they did a good job and this is very helpful for us. I think you know, now that we you know get a overall landscape that you know this is the, the cell cellular membrane, we see the ACE2 hanging off outside of that and here's the spike. Uh, really we need to look at this receptor binding domain um, as well as you know the mutations that are in the spike. So uh, let's go ahead and clear things up and clean it up and just get the spike and then we can analyze what's going on. And now we have it colored exactly like the paper and we can show all these areas of mutational interest. So we have this mutation on the side, we have this mutation on top, um, and then there's also over in a, a few deletions. And so because the, the amino acids are, are going to be missing, they go from being there to not being there, um, we haven't really colored them in this model. But uh, I think what's particularly important is, is this one here on the top. So uh, Carmen and Daniel, yeah, do you want to share a little bit more about these mutations and, and what it might mean for COVID-19? Sure. Well, this one, to, to get started, is the isoleucine 692 that mutates to uh, valine. It's a conservative mutation. It's located just seven residues away from the furin cleavage site. Then the one you just mentioned, it's up here, which is most interesting, it's in the RBD of the spike protein here. It's uh, this tyrosine 453 that mutates to a phenylalanine. And it actually has been shown to, to increase the affinity to human ACE2. So we're going to take a look uh, shortly to the interaction between the RBD and the ACE2 as well. Yes, in that case, it's not a conservative mutation, but some characteristics uh, of the tyrosine are conserved in terms of hydrophobicity of this region. For example, here we can lose some H bond donors feature that could affect, of course, the interaction with the ACE2 surface. So uh, this mutation, this tyrosine, uh, this gets mutated uh, into a phenylalanine. All right, so uh, we go ahead and make that mutation. I want to select the residue here in the ACE, human ACE2 interface. We have a histidine 34, which is this one here. I'm just going to display it in nano with a secret presentation right now. Well, actually, also label it, show the sticks. There you go. Yeah, so this is the main uh, structural feature that's happening with, with uh, this mutation in mink. We have a new mana histidine residue here in the ACE2, but then it's a tyrosine actually in mink. So we can go ahead and mutate it as well. Perhaps this one or this one. Right, so these are the structural changes that are happening within these mutations. It's just not clear as of now whether that would have implications for an you know, antibody or even a vaccine development. Right? I don't want to speculate too much on that, but <laughs> it's just an observation. <laughs> <laughs> 
So here, if I show the spike protein again, another indication here, isoleucin we commented before, and there, then there's a deletion in the end, end terminal domain. Somewhere around here, there's a valine and a histidine that are deleted in some of those clusters from the mink mutation as well. And those are located in a very interesting epitope, right from it, that has right. the proteins for the antibody binding. And um, they happen to be also shielded by some glycans there. Yes, this is one of the epitope that goes from the is it in 69 to the proline uh, 79. A deletion at this point is very interesting to analyze if we think from the antibody point of view. And a very interesting feature is that this region is completely surrounded by the so-called um, glycan cloud so this specific region is very important for the epitope recognition right so we're talking about these two residues here right this is in 69 filing 70 these two just happen to get deleted in the mid mutation right in one of the clusters yes all this region is surrounded by glycans I think that one of the most interesting features here is that the interaction can occur not by the classic hydrogen bonds interaction but is uh, due to a specific hydrophobic interactions that occur in this uh, patch. Yeah, it seems like there might be like pi pi stacking, but I, I don't know about hydrogen bonds actually forming between these residues. Yeah, it might be pi pi stacking. That's right, my just... Yeah, sure. So, Carmine, uh, what type of things are, are you looking for at Dumpe Pharmaceuticals in relation to the Escalate for Cove project and, and everything that you and your team does? Oh, yes. Uh, at the moment, we are studying this mutation by using molecular dynamics simulation methods. And uh, so we already have trajectories um, coming from the wild type form. So that here is very interesting for us to compare the mutated form with the wild type in order to understand if there are some uh, significant differences uh, related to the uh, protein uh, behavior and its dynamic uh, features. So, so you're running uh, molecular dynamics to see how these proteins would move and come together with and without the mutation. So like wild type versus the Danish mink mutation or D614G and all these other coronavirus mutations happening? Exactly, yeah. Awesome, eh? and so is, is the goal then to like compare affinities and, and see how things would bind and, and sort of see if that would affect any vaccines or affect any antibodies that are also being used to treat COVID-19? Yes, exactly, Steve. In this case, we can have an idea on what can be the next steps. Thanks uh, to these technologies, then the molecular dynamic simulation will allow us to understand also if specific uh, hydrogen bonds or some specific interaction are maintained during the time and we can analyze in depth these features. That's great, that's great, okay. So it looks like Daniel uh, brought up the uh, La Saunière et al. Uh, paper that actually shows the uh, you know, coronavirus spike uh, interacting uh, you know, in the receptor binding domain with the ACE2 back there. But over here we have the, uh, the spike, uh, as you can see over in the paper there, it's pointing at that Y453F, um, and that was the uh, the main one that we were looking at uh, right here, right? Yeah, the tyrosine. And uh, they point at it again right there, and so that's yeah the same one, but now we see it interacting with the ACE2 uh, in the receptor binding domain right there. Cool. So yeah, we could uh, we could make this a little bit smaller now that we have a good idea for that. Thank you, uh, Lasanier at all. 
All right, so thanks everybody for checking out uh, our series on COVID-19 in VR. Uh, thank you so much, Carmine and Daniel for joining us. And, and thank you to everybody at Escalate for COVID for you know, really doing the, the world a huge favor here and doing the research on you know, how the coronavirus is changing, uh, what sort of things we might be use, uh, using as treatments, uh, even looking at how treatment might change uh, over the course uh, as time goes on with all these mutations. Um, so yeah, thanks so much and, and keep up the great work with Escalate for Cove. And thanks everybody. Uh, tune in to the next series. We're going to continue coverage of the coronavirus uh, proteins as well as the latest research on what's going on to help with COVID-19. Thank you everyone. Okay, thank you guys. Bye. See you next time.